Welcome to Backwater Casting. I'm your host, Rick Green. Today we have the pleasure of fishing with two-time Canadian light middleweight boxing champion, Brandon Brewer from Nakawick, New Brunswick, which is actually just down the road here from Woodstock. And we're gonna get out there for some bruiser smallmouth action on the St. John River today. I like it, looking forward to it. There's a, a weed liner on the outside of that corner. So we're gonna get all, you can throw in towards it now if you want to. And we're just gonna toss them up there and see what happens. Not big, he's not a monster. Want to break the ice. It go. does. There we go. Now that's not a great big fish, but it was fun. And welcome to Woodstock, I mean, we're right at the, we just come out of the keg, so we're right at the mouth of the ducks of the keg, right here in the middle of Woodstock, so. That's a start. One nothing, Rick. So we're in 27 feet of water right now, so that comes off fast. Yep. So I'm just throwing it in there, and I, I'm just letting it go to the bottom. Then I'm tightening it up, and if it, I just, I move the rod like that, just yep. sweep the rod a little bit. And if there's any pressure when I sweep that rod, I set the hook. Okay. So I just move, just ease, rather than reel, you have much more feel with the rod. If you sweep it ahead and then pick the slack line up with the reel, you have a, a, a much better feel. Now that just ticked over some rocks on the bottom. Oh, there we got go. one, there you go. You said it was your chance. Yeah, pretty similar. Not too bad. Oh, gosh. If That's I had one, one hit, hit that jerk That's a good start. She's tiny. We're finding our groove now. You find, just, and remember, let it, let it go down. It's very deep there. And let, just let her drop. And then just very gently take the rod sideways. This is always worth making a few casts coming across. Oh, he's bigger than I thought. I figured he'd be a little wee eight or nine incher, but. Not bad at all. Oh, just a little guy. We're looking for his grandma. In the fishing world, the female fish are the big fish. The female fish are? Yeah, they're the big oh. ones, yeah. There he goes. Oh. Got one? Yeah, yep. we got a double, daily double. Oh, it's a decent fish, too. So oh, got, who's got the bigger one? If you go to lift it, make sure you got about five feet of line off of the end of that rod. Not too bad. Biggest one so far. There's bigger ones out there, I think. Rick, what's the biggest fish you've caught in St. John River? Well, the biggest smallmouth bass I've caught in New Brunswick was 4.78 pounds, and I caught that early in the year. But we've weighed some in the tournaments. I can remember one at 5.22. I'm not saying that's the biggest, but that's the biggest one I remember. So there, a five pound fish in New Brunswick is extremely rare. That's a good fish too. That 5-3. I gotta put her in the boat first though, don't I? Yes, it's not in the boat yet. He back there and cut his line. Take care of that. Oh, that's a that's the bigger one today. So I would, yeah, just get a hold of the line. Don't not watch the rod tip, she'll break. Yeah. Not too bad. He's getting there now. The so biggest one so far, but he's taking the jumps in big leaps now. Not too bad. Nice. Good. So we're getting up there. We'll the take size, her. We'll the, take her. The size just keeps jumping up. I gotta take a picture of that one. We're getting rolling now. Yeah. We're after bigger. Yeah. That's not big enough yet. Now what type of species are we gonna be catching up here, do you think? Well, Brandon, on this end of the river, we're above the Mactaquack Dam. So the primary species that you would have up here would be for game fish would be smallmouth bass. There'd be some chain pickerel, uh, muscalunge up here. We've seen rainbow trout in the last few years up here. And then there's, you know, you've got perch, there's probably some sunfish, uh, creek chubs, suckers, that type of, of thing. But the primary fish that the guys are after up here are smallmouth and muskies. Boys, I don't know, Brandon. I mean, give me a run for the ice cream fish here. <laughs> Jeez. 
Some might take it. No, I think yours was still bigger. Yeah, no, nice healthy smallmouth, but yeah, yours was still bigger. There. Yeah, that's another solid fish. So the, the, oh, anyway. the lesson there is exactly what we do in tournaments. Different baits, and obviously I fished through that with the jerk bait, and you went right behind me with the tube and you caught it. And that's why most of the time in tournaments we're fishing different, my partner and I would fish different baits. That might be a new ice cream fish right there. You think Not so? Sure. Boys, I tell you. Be close. Not might have to start getting the measuring tape out here. Not too bad. They keep getting bigger, so we're going to keep at her. Yeah. No, that was good. I think that's a new ice cream fish. So, Rick, what's the story on the ice cream? So we're teasing you a little bit about the ice cream fish. And what that is, just over the years with my partner, Philip and I, the guy who gets the biggest fish of the day, the other guy has to buy him an ice cream. And uh, right now, I gotta buy you an ice cream, so I gotta take care of that. So I would be throwing that away. I'm due. You are due. Oh, you just put the brakes on. Yes, sir. It, that, that just got more interesting. I thought I had me a big one. Come on, there he is. Nice hook set right in the corner of the mouth. So it should just pop right out. Come here, gotta get in there quite a ways. There, yeah. Chunky little guy. But he was there for you. Yeah, he's bigger than he looked when he jumped. Not bad. They're still biting though. They're still biting. I have got myself a two pounder. I think. If it comes off it was four, but right now I think it's a two. That's actually decent. He's bigger than I thought. So I wouldn't normally lift them like this, but nice one too. <laughs> That's a nice fish. He says, I'm not getting in the boat. Goodness gracious. He doesn't want to, he's does he? No, he's tough. Oh, he's thick, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's thick through the body. Yeah, nice. How old do you figure that fish would be? At least 10. At Is that least. Right? Yeah. yeah. And they have about a 15, 16 year life expectancy. Okay. He'd be at least 10, if not 12. Is that most fish or is that just bass? Uh, they all, they're all different. Welcome back to Backwater Casting. In this section of the show, Brandon and I are into some real hard-hitting smallmouth bass, but in between bites, we're gonna chat with him a little bit about his boxing career and what his future plans might be. Got one. <laughs> I thought he was bigger. That blue fox, there you go. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're really, uh, they're not a super expensive bait, and anything that swims in here could eat that. So Rick, you've been talking about that blue fox all morning. What's so special about that lure? Well, with this one, what I've done is, for some reason I had to replace the hook. I don't know whether, I don't know at this point whether it's damaged or not. So I've got, I put a split ring on there and I put an Excalibur rotating treble hook on there. So the, if that was right from the factory, that split ring wouldn't be there and the hook would be joined directly here. But for whatever reason, I had to change that out. So I've just, but other than that, I mean, it's a number four silver and uh, just throw it and wind it. Hold on a second. Oh, he's busy. Oh, he's pushing me on the ice cream again. Yeah. So I told you once we hit the I don't chain, think he's quite there, but he's. Yeah, so don't reel any more than, no, don't, yeah, don't reel any more than that. It'll break the tip. Ask me how I know. There we go. Not bad. Oh, little St. John River smallmouth. Uh, just a little two pounder. Uh, got, caught it with an avocado tube. Well, what I like in the river is that my melon orange tube and the avocado tube that you're throwing. That's why I rigged one of each this morning, because so, they're both 
uh, my go-to colors. And anywhere I find that there's grass, the avocado tube sound, seems to really work well. And it must have some resemblance to a fish in the water, the way the, the color would change a little bit with the light refraction in the water. But those are, those are my two favorite colors on the river. Yeah, Rick, what's so special about this location compared to when we first stopped? You said we were going to catch a fish as soon as we got up here. You, uh, you ch tossed one in and boom, bite right there. The well, big difference, Brandon, between here and where I first stopped the boat is we've got a mixed bottom here. We've got some gravel and sand, and down there it seemed to be mostly mud. And also, this has got more of a flat on it. Uh, we were sitting in 20 feet of water down there, the same distance we are off the shore here, and we're only sitting, well, she's pivoting out, but we're in 14 feet just as I swung the boat over. So there's more of a feeding shelf here too, I think. And it just seems to fish better. Oh. Who you call them small? Don't reel any more than that. That's the, that's the limit. That blue fox is still still working. That's the first one off the blue fox today for me. Yeah, you've only been throwing it. Oh, there's one. So we got a real mixed bag with depth here. We actually just come off a little bump there at 10 feet, but I'm back in 14 again. So there, there are multiple depths here for sure wasn't in bad, it was just a very bad angle. So Brandon, what's it like to be a boxer in New Brunswick? Uh, it's been pretty chaotic, really. It's been, uh, you know, it's been about six years since I turned pro and it's been nonstop since. It's, uh, but it's been good. You know, we've created a huge following here in not only New Brunswick, but the uh, land of Canada and all across Canada, really. And uh, it's been great. It's been a crazy ride, but it's been fun. So. So, Brand, I noticed when we were looking at your belts this morning that they're from two different boxing associations. So you're you're actually light middleweight champion in two different associations. Can you tell me a little bit about how that works? The NABA, uh, which is the North American Boxing Association, um, they have a uh, a championship for the United States champion. They also have a champion for a Canadian champion. So I won the Canadian championship belt for NABA. He got oh, about bit. A, about a two pounder. Nothing crazy, but. Watch that rod tip. And small again. So the smaller fish are starting to, to turn on, but. We gotta go find some big girls. Come on up. Have a look at you. Here you are. He thinks he's a big fish. It's just a peanut. So Rick, what type of bait are you using now? So I, I've been mixing it up a bit. We we're catching some nice fish, but we're not seeing any really big fish yet. So I've been mixing it up and I'm throwing different baits. So this one is a drop shot. So with, with this setup, the hook and the bait are up the line and the sinker is below the line. And I like about that length for me. Uh, anyway, so this sits on the bottom. You, you keep your line tense and that just moves in the water like that. So you can keep it up off the bottom. Most likely when you get hung up, you, you might lose your sinker. Very rarely do you use, lose the whole rig. And that's just a stick bait, soft stick bait. I like green pumpkin. So they're actually, they're, we're just going off a hump here right now. So I'm going to just go back there a bit and I'm going to bring that right down. We're in 12 feet back where Brandon is standing and I'm in 14 and dropping right now. And yes, sir, look at that. So what I would say is that rock outcropping over there extends this way in the water and that fish was sitting on that drop. There, come on, there you go. Here, you can do it. Oh, that was a made-for-TV moment. Called the, oh. called the drop. There we go. And, oh, he's got that. Look good, Brandon. You said that rock ledge. Yeah. Carries out this way. That's so what I it looked right like to me. Yep. That actually looked like it had some size to it. Is that an ice cream fish? I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Well, if it comes off, it's not because yeah, I don't think that's any bigger no. than your other one. I think you still got the ice cream fish, but have a look when he comes out. Yeah, that's decent though. There we go. Yeah. Not bad, they're getting bigger. 
Yeah, you get close we're, to the lens, it gets even bigger. They're getting bigger. <laughs> we're going to find the mama here soon. Do you have an analogy about the fight with a smallmouth and a fight in the ring with a boxer? It's, it's usually the smaller guys that have the bigger fight in them, so I don't... That's halfway true, too. You know, it's they have a point to prove, and, and, and same thing with the smallmouth. They're uh, pound for pound, probably one of the, the tougher fighters, so... And they are. Told you to be fish on a rock. And take the boat out a bit. Where are you going? Yeah, another decent one, too. He hit that, uh, that was stopped in the water. That rod just jerked sideways. That's my better fish for today. I yeah. think I'm getting closer to the ice cream. I think he's still got me, but I'm getting closer. Boys, I don't know. He's hooked. He's hooked. Well, what happens with the jerk bait? They tend to hit the head, and then the bait slaps around and quite often will stick another couple of points in them. Got there one? We go. There we go. We're on Nothing him now. Nothing crazy, but. We are on him now. No, no, not that short. Oh. <laughs> that, those tips will snap right off those rods. So, Brandon, I understand you're, you've got a little bit of a change coming along. So, talk to me a little bit about that transition that you're making. Uh, yeah, there about uh, a year and a half ago, I seen the opportunity to, uh, to start my own promotion company and, and kind of, you know, uh, promote the boxing the way that I kind of envisioned it. Um, I've learned a lot over the years of, of promoters fighting on different cards and uh, I think it was kind of my time to seize the opportunity and be able to uh, start a business from it. So. so it's a big step outside of the ring. What are your challenges that you're running into trying to develop this promotional business? Yeah, I think that uh, when I'm boxing as an athlete, I always believe you know, you had to be the hardest working guy in order to get different results from everybody and, and I kind of took that over into the promoting side of things. Uh, I'm a perfectionist inside the ring, so I wanted things to be perfect outside the ring. So it uh, kind of goes hand in hand with each other. Oh, I got a nice one. That actually, I keep saying I got a nice one, but they all look big when they <laughs> jump, but this one actually looked bigger. And again, I got him on that uh, jerk bait. And uh, dead, again, dead in the water. I just saw the line jump and I just came back on it and got him, but yeah. Look at just, him. Yeah, that's, a, the, yeah. That might I, be I, the. I hate to break this to Brandon. <laughs> this is the ice cream fish. You got to get it out of the water first now. Yeah, that is. Look a, at that. That is a nice fish. That's what we're after right there. And I wouldn't normally lift them like this, but I got heavy line. But it kind of goes with what Brandon said earlier. You get these smaller fish, and they're the ones that scare me because they don't stop. This guy just kind of passive right now. A small fish would still be beating and thrashing in my hands, trying to get away. What size was that? Three pounds. No, decent. Oh, decent. Come around here now. Move over to the camera. There you go. Not too bad. No. Nope. Caught bigger, but. Oh, they're all tough. They are all tough. Oh, you got them? Welcome back to Backwater Casting. Well, Brandon and I have taken a run down the river. We're now fishing below Woodstock a little bit. And in between bites down here, we're gonna chat with him about his first time in the boxing ring. We're back in action now. Why is he jumper too? He's pulling down yeah, now. Yeah, that's a good fish right there. You want a net on him? Nice. That's a solid, that's another picture taker. Gotta get a picture taking fish there. That's solid. Barely you know what? Him. Barely had him is enough. I'll take it. I barely knocked that guy out. <laughs> it's enough. <laughs> We're catching them all day here. All day. My God, they're strong, aren't they? 
That's beautiful. These I might take off a couple. Just dogging it for the bottom. Tube. And there's the bass. Up. And in you go. There you go. Okay, and up you come. There's lots of that. There we oh, you got another one? Yeah. Cool. There we go. The blue fox is on fire. Oh, they're good little baits. Looks like they might actually, I might give you a hand there. You want a net or are you going to grab them? I got them. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Nice solid fish. Good fish. That's a nice size right there. Good one. He was bigger than I thought. Yeah, and he's he was, not as big as I thought. No. I thought he was a pound heavier when he came up. Yeah. I love it. You know, I haven't, I haven't done a whole lot of it since I was a kid, uh, and uh, it kind of takes me back. I have, I've never fished up this way towards Woodstock, and uh, it won't be the last time I'm back. There's, there's a lot of fish up here, and it's, it's beautiful. Goodness gracious. This guy's got some serious shoulders on him. Haven't you seen him yet? He looks big. No, any sign of coming into the boat. He's just, he's not that, I mean, he's good, but he just fights like he's way bigger than that. Whoa. That fish fought way, way bigger than that. That is an amazingly tough fish. Size Rick? Uh, he was a light three, maybe. That fish seemed to be a little lighter than the other ones we've caught so far. What? Why is that? Well, what I what I'm assuming, Brandon, with that fish being pale like that, is that we've got a sand bottom out there. We just came off. We've got a really strong color line over here, but we got clean water over here. So I I think that's probably just a sand bottom and shallow fish, probably only four feet deep up there. Where'd you get that fish on, Rick? Yeah, Brandon, I'm getting a lot more flash on my bait than you are, so I'm going to rig you up with a big spinner bait, and uh, we'll see if that helps you a little bit. And this one's a half ounce Strike King, so you're going to have to get you know reel it fairly quickly, and it's going to really go when you get it out there. You're going to, especially with this wind. We're all champion casters in the wind. That's the spot. It's all about knowing where to stop the boat. That looks like he's giving a pull too. Yeah, I'm liking it. We're rolling. Yeah, I would, don't pull them by the line. That's a pretty big fish. That's a serious fish right that's there. That's a serious fish right there. Yep, good, yeah, that's a good one, Brandon. That's probably handy three pounds. It's got a big, big girth on it. That's a nice, nice fish. What was it like the first couple of times you actually put the gloves on, stepped into a ring with somebody? Uh, it was, it was different. It was much more, uh, it was uh, much more different than what I anticipated. It was more of a game than a fight. It was uh, like chess at a million miles an hour. Yeah, because you're not mad at the guy. It's it's a fox. It's yeah. a it's a you know it's a it's a sport just like anything else. You you know you have time to practice. You have time to train. Uh, you have time to come up with a game plan and. Uh, just like any other sport, really, it was just very intense. It was very quick. Things were moving way quicker, but you had to slow your mind down, which that's the key to it. You have to, usually the guy who thinks the other guy is the guy who, who ends, up, ends up winning. Mm -hmm.